Okay. 12.36. You want to hang a 10 kilogram sign uh, that advertises your new business. To do this, you use a pivot to attach the base of a 5 kilogram beam. There's the 5 kilogram, 5 kilogram beam, and there's the pivot. Uh, you want to attach that to the base of a wall. You then attach a cable, a cable to the beam and to the wall. You attach a cable to the beam and to the wall in such a way that the cable and beam are perpendicular to each other. All right. The beam is two meters long. That beam is two meters long and makes an angle of 37 with a degrees with a vertical. You hang the sign from the end of the beam to which the cable is attached. Okay. What must be the minimum tensile strength of the cable? That is the minimum amount of tension it can sustain if it is not to snap. Okay, so that's part A. What is the tension in this cable? The minimum tension needed, tensile strength needed in this cable so that it doesn't snap. Okay, so what is, what's our approach? Please try and solve this on your own. Well, the first thing always is I would draw this free body diagram, extended free body diagram. And I've got tension there in the cable. I've got I've got this force of the this contact force of the sign on the beam. I've got uh, the center of mass, and I've got gravity acting on that earth on the beam. And I've also got these. I've got basically a a contact force here that is obviously from the wall onto the beam. Okay, and what I can do is I can break this guy up into x and y. So f contact of the wall on the beam in the x direction and f contact wall on the beam in the y direction. Okay, so now I've got all the forces that I need. This is my extended body diagram, extended free body diagram. And the question is, we want to now find out what is the tension, the minimum tension here. Okay, so let's let's use torques. We know that it is in rotational equal, equilibrium, meaning our rotational acceleration is zero. Okay, so so we know that sum of the torques is equal to zero. Okay. Now, where do we take, where do we sum the torques about? What do we take as our pivot point? Well, this one is obvious. This is even called the pivot point. But in, another reason why we would want to choose our pivot point over here is simply because we don't know these forces. We don't know this force and we don't know that force. So if we took um, our pivot point about the center of mass, then we're going to have uh, torques with these two forces which are unknown plus this one but if we take uh, the torques about this pivot point here then these do not come into play because they pass through that pivot point so let's see some of the torques about the pivot point equals zero let me just rewrite it some of the torques equals zero so we're going to have this we know that that is perpendicular and we choose counterclockwise as positive. So we've got this T multiplied by some, uh, some lever arm. And now what's nice about this is that because this is perpendicular to the, the length to this beam, we know that the length of the beam has to be the lever arm because it is perpendicular. So we can call this L, right? So L is the length, which is two meters of this beam. And it's just simply going to be T times L because we've got this and it's perpendicular. Now we've also got this force causing a, so this, for, this force is causing a, an anti-clockwise, so it's positive. 
This force will cause a clockwise torque, so it's going to be negative FC SB multiplied by what? Multiplied by what? Well, we know that that this length here is going to be our lever arm for this force. Right, because it's a force times a perpendicular distance. And this length over here is going to be L, by the way. This was theta. So it's going to be L sine of theta. Because L sine of theta gives you that length, which is the same as that length. So let's go back here. L sine theta. All right, now what about this guy? We've also, it's also causing a clockwise torque, so it's going to be Fg earth on the beam multiplied by, let's change the color, multiplied by that perpendicular distance, which will then be, because we assume that this beam is uniform and the center of mass is directly in the geometrical center of this beam, then we know that this length over here, from there to the center of mass, is half L. And that means that that length there will be half L sine theta. L over 2 sine theta. So this is our lever arm for this torque. And then that simply equals 0. And now, I'm not going to go into all the detail, but this force, Fc, this force over here, is simply equal to the, is simply equal to m uh, of the sine times g. Okay? And this force, if uh, the gravitational force is simply equal to m of the beam times g, uh, we know that L is 2, and we know that theta is 37. Okay? And so, if you solve for T, you should get approximately 74 Newton. So, the minimum tension in this cable is 74 Newton. Alright? Now, the question B says, determine the horizontal and vertical components of the force exerted by the pivot on the beam. So now we need to determine these forces. Okay? So again, it's not so bad. Some of the forces, because it's in equilibrium, uh, even translational equilibrium, some of the forces in the x equals 0. What are the forces acting in the x direction here? Well, we this is the obvious one. It's the, the force of the wall on the pivot point here in the x direction. But... But it is balancing this force, the x component of this force, right? That one. So, we can say then that F contact of the wall on the beam in the x direction minus the tension force, the tensile force in the cable, and that, that is also theta, T cos theta equals zero. And so we know what T is, we know what theta is. We we get this F C W man, these the way to describe these forces. Oh my goodness. Okay, anyway, that is approximately um, fifty nine Newton. And similarly some of the forces in the Y equals zero. And all we need to do is add up this force, minus that force, minus that force, plus that component, which is T sine theta. This, this component is T sine theta. And we should get F contact wall on the beam in the y direction is approximately 100 Newton. Okay, so if you use 
and you you use more significant figures you may get slightly different answers but as long as you um, in the ballpark um, this is what the textbook gives us as the solutions okay cheers